everyone, today's outfit piggybacks off one I did last month where I shared what's new in my closet and tried to pair it with existing pieces. Things weren't looking right and so I shared different ways I tweaked outfits to make it look right, at least to me. So today is a similar concept. It's basically, how do I wear this? But in this episode, if you wanna call it that, I'm gonna share with you why maybe it's not such a bad idea to stick with the same general color palette because the problem I was having with a lot of these pieces, we're gonna see it over and over again, is I went a little bit out of my comfort zone and tried pairing either a new material or a new color into my existing wardrobe and I was having a little bit of a hard time finding pieces to pair with it. So I'll show you how I fixed all that. And I do wanna point out that I am making this video as both a help for myself as I walked through all of these things, but also maybe inspiration to you if you are stuck with something that you love but you don't know how to wear it. By no means am I suggesting you run out and buy all of these pieces that are new to me, but if you are interested in purchasing any of these or just learning more about any of the products I'm sharing, I will list each piece and the pieces that I paired with it down in the description box if you want more information along with sizing and a pricing and links. All right, let's start with the first outfit. So for this, it wasn't so much a color as a fabric. Faux leather joggings are not new to me. I have added a couple of faux leather pieces into my wardrobe this season, starting with some wide leg cropped leather pants, which admittedly were really tricky to put together. And then I got a pair of faux leather joggers from Walmart, and I like those very much, especially that price point, but there were some things about it that I didn't love. I felt like the length was a little tricky. They were a little cropped on me. So when Spanx offered to send me a few pieces from their collection, I did not say no. I'm a big fan of Spanx undergarments and outerwear as well. So these are definitely an investment piece. However, joggers, whether they're real or faux leather, have been around for a couple of years and I don't think they're gonna go away anytime soon. The trick is how do you wear this so it doesn't look too edgy or too street style? My general look is usually some sort of variation on very casual mom style. And so I wanted to figure out how to wear this to soften it a little bit and make it more wearable. So a couple of things. When in doubt, go with neutrals. And I've started slowly adding more neutrals, specifically creams and sort of light apricots and ivories into my rotation. So I grabbed another piece from Walmart actually. So this is something I've shared before. And if this isn't exactly in stock, you can find a shirt that looks like this just about anywhere. It is longer in length, but it's a thinner material, so it's easily tucked in. So ivory and black is a nice pairing. Obviously, it's very neutral, and there are lots of combinations you can do with it, but the ivory, I feel, softens the look instead of doing head-to-toe black or even a stark white. And then to give the outfit a little bit of continuity, instead of pairing black shoes, which is probably most people's go-to, I decided to break up the look a little bit with not quite ivory, but my go-to shoes, so much go-to that they're on my feet. Hang on. These ankle cutout boots, I've talked about these in so many videos. I personally like to make a black bottom, whether it's joggers or pants or whatever, look more casual, more softer by adding a color shoe like this instead of carrying the black all the way through. So I just wanted to put that idea in your head. And then to soften it further, and also because these are more slimmer fitting pants, these faux leather joggers. I pulled something out of my closet I've had since July but haven't been able to wear because the weather has not broken. And that is this knit trench style cardigan. This also comes in black. I got this during the Nordstrom anniversary sale. It is still in stock, which makes me happy. I went with my true size small. And everybody says that a trench coat is just a closet staple. It's a neutral piece. A lot of people wear it as part of their outfit. That for me is a little bit much. I don't wanna wear a jacket in the house, unless it's really cold. I've been known to do that. But I like that this gives you the trench look, but softens it again. We're going with that soft look. It's all about the soft fabrics, the soft knit of this, the soft fabric of the tunic top, paired with something that's a lot of more stronger, bolder look with the leather joggers. So I love this. And again, if you wanted to switch it around and make it look a little more edgier, Wear this one in black, find a black top, black boots, maybe Chelsea boots, and you have an entirely 
different look going. Before we move on to the next outfit, I do wanna point out some sizing information on the joggers if you are interested. So it has a nice flat front, no actual button and zipper here, and then the back is elastic. And unlike Spanx compression undergarments, this has a lot of give. So this is easy to get on and off, and it's easy to pull out, especially when I was tucking in the knit top, not a problem. Now there are no pockets on the back, which is another reason why I liked wearing the longer trench over it because I felt a little exposed, shall you say, with nothing covering the bottom, so to speak. It does have pockets in the front, so that is handy when you don't know what to do with your hands. And I wouldn't say it's a cropped length. I didn't order the petite. I went with my regular length, but Spanx sizing guides are so important to look at because each piece runs a little bit differently. So it said that the joggers run a little bit bigger than true to size, not full on size up a full size, but definitely roomier than other than the true to size. So I took that into account and decided to stick with the small and I feel like it really worked. And we're gonna talk about other Spanx pieces where I decided to go a different route. So it's really important if you are buying Spanx to really look at their size charts and recommendations because they are spot on and super helpful, especially when you're ordering online and you can't try it on ahead of time. Let's move on to the next outfit. On to outfit number two. And in this case, I already knew exactly what size I am in these pants because I already bought these ones. These are the tapered utility pants from Banana Republic and I've purchased these and I've worn them in ivory. I love them. I love them so much that when they recently went on sale during Cyber Week, I picked them up in this. So here's where we go with it. What color is this? It's sort of a chocolatey brown, but it's more cool toned. And I realized when I was trying to figure out what to wear with it, that I don't have a lot of things to go with it, or I thought that I didn't have a lot of things to go with it. Now, before I talk about what I paired it with, I do want to point out the sizing on these particular pair of pants. I have found, and it's been corroborated by a lot of you in DMs on Instagram, that the pants across the board at Banana Republic run short. And we're gonna talk about these, which are also from Banana Republic at the end, but I did not go with the petite in this. And again, look at the sizing charts on the individual websites. They, most brands do put some effort into giving you all the information that you need to order confidently because they don't want to deal with returns any more than you do. So in this case, it said these again run a little bit roomy. So I stayed with a size four. Sometimes I'm a size four, sometimes I'm a size six. So got these in a size four regular and they fit perfectly. Now, as far as what to wear with this, obviously I could easily pair it with the rib tunic in ivory that I just shared with you. Not a problem, it would actually go just fine with any bright color, but I decided to go, actually in this case, a little more edgy, a little, bring in a little bit of that street style, that New York look, and I went with this very classic piece. I'm kind of surprised I don't have something like this in my closet already. Very classic sort of mock neck cable knit sweater. This sweater runs roomy enough, so I did get it in a size small. I like this black with the chocolate brown. I like that slightly edgier look. But again, taking into account the fabric, this is a softer, more classic kind of fabric and material paired with this. I thought, let's just bring this, the black on top, bring it all the way together. And so to make it a little more, I keep saying the word edgy, this just is so not my style. I had a lot of fun putting this together. I pulled out these Chelsea boots that I recently picked up in a Walmart haul. I will say the sizing on these, they're from Sam and Libby. These run a little bit big, unless you're planning on wearing them with really heavy socks, size down a half size. They bring in the black from the sweater. It's a whole vibe. I'm really enjoying it. Now I will say what's nice about this is these pants can very easily be dressed up. I have worn them with neutral colored heels, like more of a nude toned pump, wear it with a blouse, now you can wear it to work. But that's why I liked bringing in the pieces that I have because I can wear them in a few different ways in a few different settings. Now let's move on to outfit number three. In this outfit, this is not new. I've shared this before when I did a J. Crew factory haul. I haven't been able, again, to wear these much because of the weather. And the other reason I didn't pull them out much is because I didn't have anything that goes with this rusty brown tan color. 
I think it's a really fun color. I'm seeing it all over the place for fall. I'm sure it'll carry on into winter. I, the few times I've worn it, I've worn it with an ivory sweater. It pairs really well with denim. And I should say, in case of doubt, it's always nice to have some ivory tops, some black tops, and some denim or chambray tops to go with different color bottoms. So, this was a little bit of a tricky color for me to work with with what I already have in my closet. And I noticed, even though I was born and raised in the Chicago area and the first 24 years of my life, I wore a lot of black. A lot of people wear a lot of black up north. Once I moved to Texas, I really stopped wearing much black. I started adding a lot of color. I think it's because when I first came down to Texas and I started working, I would get a lot of comments like, where's the funeral, who died? <laughs> And I noticed in warmer climates, there's generally more color worn, for sure. But I've slowly started adding more black into my wardrobe, especially in the cooler months. I use that term loosely as it's 74 degrees outside. But I recently ordered a really basic crew neck black sweater. Now this particular sweater, very budget friendly, it's from Amazon, comes in a million colors as everything does. It's part of the Amazon Essentials line, I believe. I did size up in this. I have found that Amazon brand sweaters tend to run a little bit small. This wasn't so hard to figure out. The black and the tan or brown or rust or whatever you want to call this color, paired these together. But then what always stumped me was, okay, this is great. What shoes to wear? So I could try and pair it with my go-to shoes again, but it just didn't feel right to me. I will say that the easy way to go if you wanna keep it casual is a pair of white sneakers. That's perfect with this. But then these are also new. And I have so many friends who have these and love these and I finally bit the bullet. I, I, they were not on sale, I just got them full price. These are the Rothy's pointed toe flats, I don't know what they're actually called. And it, again, when in doubt, you can always, not always, but you can often wear a leopard print or a cheetah print with almost, it's almost a neutral. Especially because the black brings out the black again in the sweater, so you're kind of repeating things in the outfit, makes it look a little more cohesive. Some size guides on the Rothy's. First of all, again, read what the actual brand has to say. They advise going half size up. I did that and the minute they came out of the box and I put them on my feet, they felt like I was wearing socks. Like just like they were molded to my feet. They fit like perfection. One of the selling points on these is that you can throw the whole thing in the washing machine. The insole pops right out as well if you just want to freshen up the insole because they're designed to not be worn with socks. I haven't washed these yet, but they're so amazingly comfortable. I do have some travel planned at the end of January and February and these are definitely coming with me. I like the rubber sole, I feel really secure in these, and they do come in so many other fun colors and prints, and they do make a couple other shoe styles that I will probably have to explore at some point. But back to the actual outfit itself, if you have a color like this in your wardrobe, I would love to hear from you what you like to pair with it, especially the shoes, because brown shoes get tricky because if you don't get the exact same brown, it clashes. So what do you go, do you do black boots? Do you just wear white sneakers? Please share what you're doing as well down in the comments. This next outfit, I ran into the same problem and I don't know that I solved it 100% with the shoes, but let's talk about the piece that drove me nuts. These were sent to me in PR. These are also from Spanx. These are part of their faux suede leggings collection. And the reviews on these, people love them. My problem is, I tend to stick with either black on the bottom, navy on the bottom, and also jeans. So anything outside of that is hard for me to visualize. So first let's talk about the sizing. So Spanx leggings definitely run small, especially these. So in this case, I did go with a medium and I did get the petite length because they, they run small in the waist and long in the legs. So medium petite here, I will just be completely honest with you, these are not my favorite leggings from Spanx. I love their faux leather leggings, I love their regular leggings. I just generally don't like the feel of suede leggings. To me, they feel like a thick, weird pant legging hybrid, and I'd rather just go with either faux suede pants or a regular legging. I didn't know what to pair these with, and I had them, so let's figure something out. So, I already own this sweater 
in two colors, red and honestly, a color almost like this. So I decided, I already know I like the sweater, let's just add some more ivory to the mix. So I went with this really long, covers all the things sweater. This sweater runs very big. I have this in an extra small. I do like that it has the slits on the side, so you're not gonna get lost necessarily in all of that extra fabric. And it does have a little bit of a high-low hem, even though it is very long. So all the things are covered. I do come from the school of thought that things that leggings are not pants and should not be worn where this part is visible. That's just me, but I think from the waistband to below the crotch should be hidden under another layer of fabric and not shared with the world. I got stuck on the shoes. Again, I went with my go-to nude ankle boots. I mean, they go, but there's just something not quite right still about this outfit. I can't put my finger on it. I tried on some black shoes that didn't work for me. I've seen it again, white sneakers that works, but my legs are kind of consistently the same width from top to bottom. So unless I wear heels, my legs tend to look a little bit stumpy. So again, this isn't necessarily where I'm always gonna have an answer for you. I would love to hear in the comments, what would you put with this outfit? Because me and my stumpy legs are a little stumped. Now this next piece is not really new. I've had it for a few months and I've never really talked about it. I've shared it once or twice over on Instagram. This also solves a conundrum that I have from time to time. So this is a tunic length, somewhat buttoned blouse, again from Amazon, and it comes in a bunch of patterns and colors. The issue here is that I love wearing a button up blouse, but sometimes when you tuck it in and you blouse it over, the buttons break at a weird point and you get that gaping right around the waistband. This solves that problem because the buttons don't go all the way down to the waistband. You know, they stop at a certain level. So if you want to wear this like a tunic and not tuck it in, it's a nice fluid fabric. You absolutely can do it. It's, I think it's a rayon blend. It does run, I should say, a little bit narrow. I have this in a size small. If you are any curvier than me, this is 34D and I've definitely got hips. It's a little snug, so if you want more room to wear it like a tunic, maybe you wanna size up. What's nice is when you tuck it in, you don't have to worry about any buttons gaping because the buttons stop where any gaping would be. So I recently talked about how I like to wear button-up blouses with skinny jeans, and this is a perfect situation for that. And you can wear blue and blue jeans together. There's no rule that says that you can't. The fashion police do not actually exist and no one is gonna come to your house and take you away if you pair these things together. I do wanna talk about these particular skinny jeans. These were the featured jean and my skinny jeans are not dead video. And I wanna point out what I love about these is I got them in the curvy fit instead of the regular fit, which means it goes in a little bit more at the waist and it has a little more room in the hips, thighs, and rear end, which is that hourglass shape for me and these fit and are so much more comfortable than any other pair of skinny jeans that I have. By no means do you have to get the White House Black Market ones. I love the Maurice's jeans for the same exact reason. They do have a curvy fit, but the reason why I didn't recommend any skinny jeans from Maurice's in that previous video is because all of their skinny jeans were distressed or embellished, and I just wanted more of a darker wash no distressing. So that's why I picked the ones that I picked. All right, let's finish up by talking about what I have on right now. So again, a pair of pants that are not my usual color. They're not navy, they're not a pair of jeans. They are not quite olive green either. They're sort of this weird hybrid between a brown, green, and it's a little bit tricky with what exactly to pair them. And by that, I mean, shoes. So again, I went with my favorites, the nude ankle cutout boot, and I decided to add some color on the top. This is from Amazon, like I mentioned before. It's a really fine gauge, lightweight sweater. If you live in any climate that's similar to mine here in Texas, this is a great winter staple to have. It's a sweater you can wear in the winter without also suffering from heat stroke. And it also comes in, you know, all the colors. I did size up to a medium. I like having a little more room. I wanted to be able to tuck it in untucked. It's a pretty generous length, but you can either do the front tuck or I just roll it under all the way around like so. 
it's just a, it's a basic thing. It's really nice to have. And then as far as these pants go, I did want to talk about, again, it's really important to look at the sizing guides. So the previous pair of Banana Republic pants that I shared earlier, those ran a little bit roomy. So those are size four. The reviews on these skinny corduroy joggers said they run small. So I sized up to a six and then I assumed that these are a little bit longer. It didn't say they were cropped. So I originally ordered these in a six petite. Well, that was a, an outfit fail and I was in a huge hurry to leave the house when I put them on. So I just ripped the tags off, pulled them on, knew that the outfit wasn't gonna work, didn't have time to change, ran out the door, got to my appointment. Well, I did order them again because I love them. And I got them in the six regular and now they are perfect. The length is exactly what I want. I love a corduroy jogger. I had a pair from last year from Nordstrom. They are not currently being offered, so I'm glad I found these. I'm also glad Banana Republic has sales all the time because full price, their pieces are a bit of an investment, but they are definitely well-made. These do come in a few other colors. All right, well, that's it. That's how I've been working some of these new pieces that have been giving me a little bit of a, they made me put a little more effort into thinking about my clothes, which is fine. I like sharing these day-to-day -day little dilemmas, and these are definitely little. These are not things that anyone should stress about, but it is something that does slow us all down from time to time in the morning when we're trying to put outfits together, or it's something that frustrates you because you picked out something that you thought you were gonna love, you get it home, and you don't know how to wear it. So hopefully, some of walking through this may help you figure out what to do with that stubborn piece that you have sitting in your closet. Before we leave, please let me know, what wardrobe dilemmas are you working on? What has got you stumped? Let's figure this out together. Let me know in the comments below. In any event, thanks for hanging out again with me today. I hope that you had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.